Okay, this video goes out to everyone on uh, the fish forum that I talked to. Um, so this is the wild fish tank that I have. This is where I study uh, several invasive species that have been found at my uh, preferred fishing location. Uh, this is what I've recently gathered as of a few days ago, which is very early into the fishing season. Uh, for one, we've got the rusty crayfish. Uh, this is very, very early in the season to be seeing them about. I put out a crayfish trap and some stuff to lure them in, and I didn't catch any, which is good. But I did find one that was on land, attacked. He is missing a claw. Uh, he's quite small. Uh, I have, based on my previous experience in this fishing spot, reason to believe that not many of them are going to be much bigger than this right now. Uh, these are all tubes that I made to give each individual uh, particular sea life a little home. In here we have a round goby. Now this is uh, my most interesting little guy right here, and uh, this is going to be particularly on a thread about the round goby. So, the great debate, whether or not to... Uh, continue studying the round goby or not to. Now the round goby has been known to feed on crustaceans including crayfish, like that little guy right there. Granted, that crayfish has gotten to a size that is larger than this fish can eat, but the round goby can grow to upwards of nine inches, at least that's what we've seen in the wild. In captivity, I don't know if anyone's ever captively studied them like I am doing, but uh, I'm attempting to do so, and I'm, I'm hoping to assist uh, some ecologists in my uh, general vicinity, which is Section 2 of Illinois. Uh, that's what the Department of Natural Resources has uh, determined this area to be, and where I go fishing at. Um, so, what we have is essentially an attempt to understand uh, what kind of foods a wild round goby will eat. Now, we know what they'll eat in the wild, but I have to determine a food source for them that can be readily available and obtained at any time uh, that's not uh, cost prohibitive for me to grow them out and study them further. So right here we have one of well, another goby over there, but uh, I've, I've tried several foods. Um, first off is an algae wafer. This particular type of algae wafer comes from Hikiri, and once they're placed into the tank, they will expand over time. It is clear that it has been eaten, and I don't recall placing it in that one spot, so I have reason to believe it was brought in by either the crayfish or the goby, possibly that goby right there which he's just kind of chilling out. Uh, I have not sexed any of the gobies. Uh, I got to do a little bit of research. I don't know if they're one of those fish that can change their sex based on the situation. Um, but uh, this might be this goby's little home that he's claimed. And there are a total of three gobies all about the same size. So once again, it's very early in the fishing season. It's not even technically spring yet. But uh, I did some preliminary research. Now, uh, the round goby in the wild has a main diet of uh, zebra mollusks, I believe they are, and uh, it, it makes absolutely perfect sense because in the area where I fish and where these were found, uh, there were basket clams, which are very similar, uh, very high in protein, uh, bivalves, uh, it wouldn't be a problem for them to adapt to basket clams. The bigger of the of the three is in this tube. Well, actually, he scurried out. Gobies are very, very fast sucker fish. If I were to compare them to uh, any fish that I've kept as an aquarium fish, I, I would say they're very close in speed to a bushy-nosed pleco in terms of their ability to uh, get out of the way or move uh, whenever they sense there's danger. So, gobies are, 
uh, diurnal and nocturnal so it doesn't matter what time of the day it is they will feed regardless they are extremely voracious eaters now to cite my ability to handle wild uh, invasive species uh, the list of insp invasive species I have studied successfully for the past eight months, uh, possibly longer actually now that I think about it, would be the rusty crayfish, uh, the banded killifish, which is considered invasive in certain areas of the country. Uh, I have dealt with some uh, wild basket clams, which uh, I collected some samples. It would be these guys right here, like I was saying before, easy bivalves for them to eat off of. It explains why there was a mass die-off. Uh, the goby population is probably recovering from the winter, which explains why you see a bunch of those laying about uh, the shores. The other day was a new moon, so it, there was no moon, meaning that uh, it's basically super low tide. Uh, perfect time to catch uh, stuff like crayfish uh, if they're out and about and uh, what I did was I set up a trap with bacon and pink salmon and uh, to my surprise I got a goby now I've been at this spot for over a year now fishing I haven't been uh, capturing and studying for a year but it's been about eight months like I was saying before but I've been fishing at the spot for over a year now and I'm pretty familiar with the types of fish in there. Uh, large predator fish would be stuff like the smallmouth bass and the catfish that would probably eat a goby without, without thinking about it. Uh, catfish uh, are bottom feeders. Gobies are interesting bottom feeders. A lot of bottom feeders uh, prefer vegetation and are omnivorous, whereas the gobies uh, prefer a higher protein diet and they're sucker fish but not in the normal sense a normal sucker fish like uh, a pleco has the suction cups around the mouth goby have a special fin under under their belly uh, that suctions them onto a surface um, so this is the preliminary study um, as this little guy grows, so will these. They have gone from water where uh, I have t I tested it about eight months ago for their nitrates, nitrites, pH, ammonia levels, etc. Uh, their levels were actually a bit elevated compared to what I thought it would be at considering it's such a large body of water. Uh, that being said, obviously there's plenty of fish and the density of the population uh, in that area is widely compacted of uh, invasive species. So what we essentially have in this spot are there very uh, high amounts of, or a very high diversity of invasive species uh, going about in this one spot and a few predators that will take them out. So the goby is another particularly uh, invasive fish for another reason, uh, even to bass, uh, because when the bass lay their eggs, uh, the male will guard the eggs, but uh, the goby can kind of gang up on them, and uh, eventually they will eat the bass eggs, which means less predators to take out these little guys. So they are super voracious eaters. And I say super voracious because I know things that are comparable, like the rusty crayfish, are omnivorous. They will eat uh, anything that is freshly dead, and they will eat vegetation. Um, but uh, one thing I want to get back to is the water parameters in the lake. I have them from last year. Uh, I gotta retake the water parameters again using the API Master Test Kit for fresh water. Um, but I do know the water in here is pristine. I know that the ammonia is zero, the nitrites are zero, the um, nitrates uh, will be very, very close to zero. Uh, that is until there are possibly more other wild fish in here. 
or the fish grow larger. Uh, to combat that, I have a 30 gallon breeder that I've repurposed. This used to be my main tank, but it is now a study tank with a hang on back filter that has uh, 1000 grams of Fuvol Biomax in the back of it, plus uh, biological cartridges. It is uh, heated up to tropical temperatures, which all of these fish are well adapted to. The hardness has been brought up to approximately 250 parts per million uh, general hardness. Um, so these little guys can be active if given the chance. Right now they appear to be in a dormant stage. Uh, the lights were off. The food is scarce. And one of the problems I have is sourcing the foods. Now we talked in the, uh, the thread about possibly using um, bladder snails. Like this guy right here. Let me see if I can focus in on him. As uh, a possible food source because they do feed on crustaceans. Uh, this is a snail. In order to teach them to eat this particular snail, uh, what I would have to do is take a breeder net, put a goby in the breeder net with several, preferably many, of these bladder snails and force them to eat them and try them out and determine that they are a food source. And that is how you would teach a fish to accept a new food source that they're not familiar with. Now these guys are still young, so they're still capable of learning something new. They're not completely stuck in their ways. The older a wild fish is, the more resistant they'll be to accepting change. But uh, the types of food I've added, and I'm sorry I strayed away from this topic as well for a bit, is the algae wafer. Uh, I've also put in uh, sinking shrimp pellets as well as floating foods such as uh, tropical fish flakes. Also all high in protein uh, if you look at the back and uh, all high in fiber. So it would be interesting to see. Uh, another food source that I've added is frozen peas and the frozen peas are actually for the crayfish because I've had a rusty crayfish. She's been my little pet essentially after a certain point for the last eight months and rusties will uh, prefer a strictly vegetarian diet if you give them the right foods. Sweet peas tend to be their favorite so it'll take time for the crayfish to understand that because he's new in this tank and I do believe it is a male because I uh, checked on the underside I didn't see the indications that would make it a female um, but uh, for now there's plenty of aeration uh, there's plenty of hiding spots for them, there's plenty of filtration, the water is always warm. But uh, what, I can, what I can do right now is attempt to agitate and you'll see how quickly they'll scurry away. Oop. Already gone. Where he went, I have no idea. Well, looks like he chose that tube over there. What I'm going to do uh, as a test. I'm going to take these three tubes, okay? I'm going to fill each tube with a different type of food. Whichever tube I see has the least amount of food is the food I'm going to assume they are going to eat, at least for now. The three types of food I will be using are, shimp, uh, are sinking shrimp pellets, algae wafers from Hikiri, and I will have some compacted, um, I'm sorry, uh, compacted tropical fish flakes. I also have uh, a large amount of uh, freeze-dried bloodworms. Uh, my other wild fish tend to go for that because the closest thing they've had to in the wild would be uh, aquatic insects. So having a meaty diet uh, should help them out. So here goes the experiment. Um, just for uh, legal reasons, I will be contacting my uh, my local conservation officer with the Department of Natural Resources uh, to make sure what I'm doing is legal. I've already got permission uh, from my conservation officer for my Rusty that I've had for a while. Uh, essentially, what the law boils down to is you don't release them into other bodies of water. These fish will never go back into the wild. 
That is just the harsh reality of it. These gobies, especially, being as dangerous as they are, pro probably doing far more damage than the Rusties ever have, um, will, uh, if requested by the officer, have to be put down, to put it lightly. But uh, if, if they give me the go-ahead and say, okay, I can keep them as a, an experiment to study them, then I will continue to do so but I prefer to be a law-abiding citizen. I take my hunting and fishing uh, seriously. I don't ever break the laws. You know, I, I do my research beforehand preferably, but uh, the reason I didn't do research beforehand was, like I said, I trapped these guys in my crayfish trap without even knowing they were in the body of water to begin with. I had never even heard of a goby or a round goby until relatively recently. So stay educated, stay informed. Uh, and I ask that if you are a fisher, if you're an angler or a wrangler, please take into consideration what's in your waters. Just Google what invasive species are in your area. Know what they look like and please do not transfer invasive species to other waters. It is damaging the ecosystem and it ruins fishing for everyone. So with that being said, I know this is a long, drawn-out video. Please bear with me. I will post updates periodically as breakthroughs come on. So, um, yeah, here we go.